If you're buying a home for the first time, like Jason or Denny's, or maybe refinancing to get a lower rate and shorten your loan term, like Virginia, the team at Ideal Lending Solutions can help. Five star service from an A plus rated mortgage lender. Go to affordthedream.com. Ideal Lending Solutions is an equal housing lender in NMLS 237341, the Division of American Financial Network. Affordable license MLD 891. Not all applicants will qualify. It's time to wake up and let the weirdness begin. It's the KBJ Show. To start your morning. Kevin <laughs> is the host. And his skin pigment is whiter than Casper the Ghost. Virginia. <laughs> Sounds like this. Nickname Vicious V. So don't get her pissed. This is Jason. Talks like his best. And he loves to talk about Bigfoot and stats. <laughs> so get ready. Here we go. You're listening to 97.9 with the KBJ Show. Hello. Happy Thursday. Welcome to the KBJ Show. What is going on, everybody? What's going on? Yeah, here we go. Welcome to it. We are up. We are ready to win some money, right? Yes. Today's that day, double your paycheck day. It's Tuesdays and Thursdays that we double up the paycheck. So starting at 9 a.m. this morning, you got uh, more chances to win some good, legit money. And we all kind of dress the same today. We've got like a black gray theme going on. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I lean black. Black's my favorite color. Me so too. I will wear that a lot. It's uh, great for guys that are pale and sickly looking. <laughs> it's great for guys too who have a bit of a gut. Yeah, it it's is. Slimming. If you're too thin, if you're too fat, if you're too pale, it just really is a very forgiving color. Black is the great equalizer. It is, yeah. It, it, so is. it makes why. fat people happy. It makes yeah, skinny people it happy. It makes pale people happy. And if you're a wimp like me, it kind of makes you look like a badass. It does. <laughs> yeah. Kind of reminds me of a John Wick in this kind of lighting. Yeah, so it's a good way for me to cover up a lot of laws that I have going on in my life. So if you want to see the Johnny Cash crew all in black, baby, we're up on KBJ TV right now on YouTube. It's the KBJ Dirt of the Day. It's the KBJ Dirt of the Day. Virginia, take it away because you know we need that Dirt of the Day. Well, uh, just yesterday, Colton Underwood from The Bachelor that at one point on The Bachelor was dating girls. He came out yesterday on Good Morning America and talked about how, you know, whoops, everybody, uh, I'm actually gay. And here is a little bit of Good Morning America from yesterday. Do I regret being The Bachelor and do I regret handling it the way that I did? I do think I could have handled it better. I'll say that. I just wish I wouldn't have dragged people into my own mess of figuring out who I was. I genuinely mean that. Colton also sharing a message for Cassie. It's hard for me to articulate exactly what my emotions were in going through that relationship with her was because I obviously had an internal fight going on. I'm sorry for any pain and emotional stress I caused. I wish it wouldn't have happened the way it did. Boy, man, The Bachelor knows how to milk a scandal, do they well, not? Yeah. This is the dude that was famously the virgin bachelor. Okay. Well, he hadn't slept with a woman because he wasn't interested. And he slept with a man? I think he was saying he was a virgin all around because maybe he was trying to figure it out. He was 29 when he was on the show. So right then and there, the lady should have been like, Burr. Yeah, well, there's a clip of some dude, uh, Billy Eyes something. He, he's the, the guy from, I think, The Tonight Show where he does the stuff, the man on the street stuff. He interviewed him like a year and a half ago and, and mm. said, maybe you're gay. Oh, oh he okay. did. The first thing I do, I'm gay. I know that's a shock, Colton. <laughs> and that I think you should look into. Maybe you're the first gay bachelor and we don't even know. I, I, I no. <laughs> Put that in your promo. See you later. Wow. Billy Eichner. That's Billy on the street, right? Yeah, yeah. I think that's who it is. Yeah, so Billy wow. smelled it. If Look, a gay man yeah. a lot of times can smell another gay man. Sure. It's just a thing. Yeah. And Colton was still trying to figure it out, and mm. he maybe wasn't sure, and he probably was trying to see if he could make women happen. Or plot twist. He knew he was gay the whole time, but he had a chance to get on national TV and well, get in there. I hope he didn't do that. No, but the Bachelor would never do that. I mean, Colton. <laughs> you think The Bachelor knew he was gay? Uh, no, I'm not saying The Bachelor. No, I'm just saying, is, this a, is, po- a, is it possible? This is, is, 
<laughs> this is the same guy, okay? During Colton's season, he got all upset when it got like too much. He jumped a privacy wall fence and ran away from producers and cameramen. He was running from it because he couldn't handle yeah. it. So, I probably, mean, probably was uh, <laughs> a, a lot. It'd be interesting to really know his true internal thoughts and where he thought he was, but. Uh, you know, most people, when when you're gay, at what age do you know you're gay? And then what is the age where you typically come to grips with it? Everybody's different. And mm-hmm. some guys don't figure it out till later. And they try to be straight yeah. because it's what their family wants. Right. Or it's what they think society wants. And mm-hmm. sometimes they don't know. And, and, and they have feelings maybe for men and women. And they're trying to work that out. It, to me, is uh, interesting to listen to gay people talking about coming out. Out. Because to me, I would think today in society it'd be so much easier, but there's still a lot of struggles for a yes. lot of people. And I just recently heard a gay guy talking about the struggles that he had had to come out and all the processes that you have to go through and all the people you feel like you're disappointing. And it's just, wow, I, I thought we'd corrected a lot of those things, but there's still issues. So it's still not well, easy, apparently. We very live in much. a very liberal area when it comes to that stuff. True. Think about yeah. the Midwest. The, yeah. I think it's better, but it's still, I mean, it's not... Yeah. It's not like it is here. No, you're right. You're right. But have no fear. It's going to have a happy ending for Colton because... He just got his own Netflix reality show. I mean, of course he did. <laughs> yeah. This is, yeah I mean, it's come, all, on. come on, Bachelor. We see you. It's all working out well I don't know him. if this is Bachelor. This is Colton. This is Netflix. I know. This is bigger. I hear you. I'm excited for him. <laughs> In other news, I don't know what's going on here. Do you see pictures of Brad Pitt exiting a Beverly Hills Medical Center in a wheelchair on Wednesday? <laughs> He's wearing a black hoodie and gray jeans. And I just hope our baby is okay. Uh, I hope this this beautiful specimen hasn't been injured or hurt or medically there's anything wrong with him. Yeah. But if they had Brad Pitt in a wheelchair leaving the facility, trying to be incognito, but the paparazzi knew it was him. Mm. Clooney tried to kill him. He's like, yeah, we're not, yeah, really, we're not really friends. <laughs> they, well, the thing I read is they said it's standard policy of that dental office that everybody has to leave in a wheelchair, but I'm like, why? What kind of tooth filling is y'all right. doing? <laughs> That's where I'm like, what dentist office anywhere ever has that as a standard <laughs> policy where you have to leave their offices in a wheelchair? And the only thing I can think is maybe they got sued once because somebody was loopy yes. from something and they fell and maybe chipped a tooth or broke a nose and so now they I, have their you know because of a lawsuit they I, now do that i just know getting my wisdom tooth taken out i was down for the count and if someone had offered me a wheelchair ride i would have taken it i mean i would take one now yeah so <laughs> a wheelchair sounds nice he's hollywood and if he had some oral surgery done he's out of it man that's true if he had any kind of sedation dentistry yeah. mm-hmm. they might have done that and that's what's going on in your dirt of the day the KVJ Show on 97.9 WRMF. What are you thinking about? What, what are you thinking about? What's on your mind? Are you thinking about? What, what are you thinking about? What you think about today, Jay Bird? Well, I'm trying to get back on this healthy train. I've really gone full gorilla in just kind of the snack world. So you go hard in both realms. <laughs> I do go hard. Mm-hmm. There's not a I, I, yeah. You don't I, have a middle speed. I never have. It's yeah. always been an issue. My mom mm-hmm. is kind of like that way. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to live in the middle. It's very yeah. tough for me. Yeah. Possibly why I'm not in a relationship, but that's another question. <laughs> okay. He's a hard bird. Yes. Yeah, so you know, it, getting you're staying healthy consistently is, it, is tough yeah. for a small town kid from Lake Park like mm-hmm. myself because back in the '80s in Lake Park, we weren't a very healthy town. <laughs> that's your shame. And you weren't a very healthy. Family. Just, I think the '80s, especially in Lake Park, I feel like everybody drank soda. And it just, <laughs> so I'm, I'm trying to do this ginger stuff. Yeah. The Big Denny's, Big D drank half of it. And what what does this ginger root do? Why would I want to drink this? What are the benefits? Because every time you guys drink it, you guys, oh, it's terrible. It's the worst. Oh my gosh, it's awful. Why would you put yourself through it? If What are the benefits? I think it gives you energy, for sure. I have felt that when I took it. I think it really aids in digestion, too. And I think it's good for your gut health. Mm. Gut health. Okay, I'm going to take a shot right now. These, This almost dropped the, the Sweet Danny's. Virginia always complains. I'm going to take this shot right now, Kev, and I'm not going to make a okay. face. I will not make a face. All right. 
Oh my god. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> right? Oh my god. So much for not make a face. That's <gasps> that's how I got the uh, idea for that bit. Was I had done a ginger shot and I'm like, "Oh my gosh." I mean, it really awful. knocks you crazy. You think you're bigger than that shot, but the shot is actually bigger than you. I hate that I just did that right now cuz yeah. It was, was it worth it, bird? Not, not that many people are listening right now. You need a chaser. God, that's awful. I, really, I need a Capri Sun. <laughs> Luckily, you have a case of oh, them in we, here. We have a lot of Capri Sun in the studio. <laughs> I don't know how much of it is proven, but yeah, I, I do the ginger a lot. In fact, uh, my wife and I, we've been trying to figure out how to, we were doing our own little juicing thing. Getting the ginger root, and we broke two different juicers. Oh. Um, I'm actually working on tradeo deals with uh, listeners to try to get their juicers. <laughs> My wife just found out that I guess you're supposed to peel the ginger, which we didn't know. And if you've ever seen ginger root, that's not going to be an easy task. So no. we're just trying to figure out the sweet sauce on it. But we would take the ginger root. We would use turmeric in it, a little bit of lemon. We had a sweet little mix there that was really great. And to answer the question, if anybody's like, why would you put yourself through that? Now, there's many different things that uh, I do it for, and I don't know how much of it's been proven, but they believe that the ginger extract can help with um, uh, kind of boosting your immune system, help with different kinds of bacteria and fight off infections, may improve brain function and protect against Alzheimer's disease, may actually help you lose weight, could possibly prevent cancer. So those lower cholesterol levels. So those, if you want to know the reasons why, those are my main reasons. It's so funny you say that because I already feel skinnier. Yeah, <laughs> as you're knocking down a Capri Sun. This stuff is awful. It's supposed to wake me up because it's so awful. That's why it wakes you up. It gives you energy and makes you feel like you just ate gas. Yeah, that goes right to the ulcer. <laughs> right. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm always looking. If there is anybody out there who does their own juicing and the ginger stuff, uh, let me know how you do it and how you peel it. Somebody said to peel the ginger root, you peel it with a spoon. At that huh. level, you're you're at a different level of health. If you're peeling your own ginger and you've got special ginger spoons, you're kind of annoying. No, I'm, ju- <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> It just, I mean, we've all handled ginger. It looks like a very tricky task. There's some ginger mm. ale, too, that they, they go heavy on the ginger, and it's not as good. There's got to be a balance in there. Yeah. What's the bad thing about leaving the skin on it? What it is, I, I think that's what broke our two juicers, because it's uh, tougher. And it got all clogged up, and it fried the motor. And Gotcha. It, the second one we used, it broke the first time we tried it. Dang. When you would do your juicers, would you guys make stuff like a Five Alive kind of a thing? All we were doing was we were doing the ginger root. <laughs> five Alive. I don't even know what that is. It's like an 80s concentrated juice that was in that frozen can. You went, <laughs> and you dropped uh, it into the big container and uh, added yeah. water. Yeah. You're old too. You knew what I was talking about. <laughs> that's yeah, some eighties ass <laughs> juice. <laughs> if five alive still out My there. mom used to get five alive because it was like sixty five cents uh-huh. for a concentrated brick of yeah. it. Oh, it. It came in a cylinder and it was in the frozen juice section. Sometimes we'd take it out of the freezer and just eat it as a big block of just five alive ice. So, uh, okay. Yeah. It's like a slushy. It's at that concentrated. Point. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. it's still out there. I don't know why I'm getting so much hate for that. I love the five alive reference. <laughs> We do that. We do the wheatgrass. You ever have wheatgrass, Jay Bird? That's <sighs> gross, too. I think I, I think I have had all of this. What's okay. the one where you go to the store and you drink it and you kind of feel high after? You're kombucha in, or kombucha. I did one kombucha. where I drank all this stuff yeah. and I felt like I was growing hair out of my teeth. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Is health really worth it at that it's, point? I don't do well with health, man. Who the hell wants hell, uh, hairy teeth? Wanda said uh, you can get the peeled ginger in the frozen food department at Walmart or Publix. Oh. Get, okay. it, get it at Publix. Okay. It's already peeled. Mm-hmm. That's uh, smart. And uh, Angie said you can use a potato peeler. We saw that, and then my wife was looking at it yesterday. She's like, that is not going to be easy. So, yeah. Yeah, some of that stuff, you're in the kitchen for 30 minutes to make a cup, a cup of yeah, I, juice. I don't have that kind of prep time. No, you get five alive, it's boom right there. So much of it. <laughs> five mm-hmm. alive is like all sugar. <laughs> 
What you got on your mind today, Virginia? Well, I wanted to see if you guys noticed something that's kind of freaking me out. This is like the second day in a row that I've come to work, and that gas station that we always go to, yep. there's a big giant racetrack gas station mm-hmm. right around the corner from our work, and this place is always bustling. Yeah. At 5 a.m., there's like construction guys in there starting their day, there's cops in there finishing their day, there's people filling up. Have there's you driven on 45th Street, you know where the racetrack yeah, is at. You know where it is. It's right next to like where the Harley Davidson place is. So for the second day in a row, this place is dark. Like it's shut down. Mm -hmm. The gas pumps are dark. The inside of the store is dark. And me and Denny's are trying to figure out what happened. Like was somebody murdered there? Because there's always squirrely people there that look like they could murder. If somebody was murdered there, they're doing a terrible job right now preventing more murders. Because if you walked in there, I feel like that is just an assault waiting to happen. It looks like Murderville. It does. It's It's so dark. And scary. Well, people live right next to that in the bushes. That's what we're talking about. Yes. The bush, there's bushes right by there. Oh, the bush people love it because the lights are out. The people will walk there. I mean, that, that's a big place for, for people to go. You could easily hide there. And I was thinking driving by, is someone trying to get in there to get the snacks? Because they have all that food in there. But if like th- if this, if something happened in the store, they would shut down this inside. If something happened at the gas pumps, they'd shut mm. down the gas. Everything is shut down. What happened? My mother-in-law said that they're doing uh, refurbishing on it, so it's closed temporarily while they uh, update it because they open up a new racetrack over on Community and Military, and so it's of higher quality, so they're just kind of going around and refurbishing the racetrack gas stations. I went to the new racetrack. Eh, it's all right. (laughs) It's all right. It's not, I mean, if they're going to go bigger and better... They did go a little better, but ain't nothing that... It's nice. I was on my Next Door app yesterday seeing some commentary that was going on about it. They do have a table, and I've noticed that uh, homeless people kind of hang out at, which is, oh, all, they do. which is all good and fine, but um, somebody was on there commenting saying that... Uh, they were very aggressive. They were running up, and um, you know some of them felt a little threatened and whatnot. And they do get aggressive here at the 45th Street racetrack. Well, I told Kevin they're going to have the same issue they have at, at, at the new one mm. because I was already noticing some issues going down. So hmm. I think they've uh, just moved over. So the, <laughs> I the, saw, the sketchy people that were here at this racetrack are like, hey, let's go to the other one. So. I was there for five minutes, and I saw an altercation. It was outside. It was very public. I'm like, well, mm-hmm. not much has changed from the racetrack. You get shook down. <laughs> yeah. I'm just here to pump yeah. gas. Mm-hmm. What I got on my mind here today, it happened yesterday. Florida's House of Representatives passed a bill to block transgender girls from playing on school sports teams that align With their gender, I started reading up a little bit more on this to understand. I used to coach my daughter's softball team, was in that world. She played softball for like 11 years, and so we spent a lot of time in there with girls' sports and competition and everything else. Everyone remembers the Palm Beach Gardens Hurricanes. Oh, yeah, that's right. Bird and I, we coached a team together. We won a championship. No big deal. No big deal, Virginia. Wow. And I saw exactly what it takes, and I was uh, telling you guys when I brought this up the other day that the first thing I'd look for and a coach arguably is you look for genetic superiority, somebody that just is athletic. When you say that, they're stronger, faster. And so I completely get that, and this all happened in, I think it was the state of Connecticut. There were some transgender girls that were beating other girls that were born female in a lot of races they were changing the record books and they that, were killing they it were destroying, they yes. were destroying every record and that got people upset and then you know a wave of bah is gone on here and i feel like florida's kind of gotten caught up in this with the fairness and women's sport act because it doesn't seem like in Florida, really, we have an issue because Florida is one of 16 states where high school athletic associations already provide guidance that allows transgender students to join sports teams that align with their gender identity, taking into consideration that fact that you don't want to rewrite record books. You don't want to cause other 
naturally born females to not get scholarships and competition and things like that. You got to balance that out. But I firmly believe everybody needs the right to play sports. I think it's great for mental health. It's great for your physical. I think there's just so many ways to do that. And I think you need to have a continuing discussion to say everybody should have the right to play sports. We just got to figure out how to do it fairly. And I'm not sure that this bill does that. It seems like it just shuts down the discussion and says, well, if you're transgender, you've gotten rid of your sports future. And I'm not a fan of that. And other people aren't as well, including the NCAA that said that they would consider polling championships from states that ban transgender athletes from participating in women's and girls' sports. That boycott could cost Florida about 50 tournaments and an estimated $75 million over the next five years. So there is a dollar amount that is attached to this as well. So in 20 or since 2013, only 11 athletes have gone through the documentation process here in Florida to even be a transgender athlete. And it seems like the Senate is going to be hearing a bill that would allow transgender athletes to join girls or women's teams if their testosterone levels are below a certain limit for a year before they begin competition. So the House bill, I don't seem to like because it seems to just shut it down and say, if you're transgender, you've gotten rid of your sports future. And I don't like that at all. I think that's wrong. It seems like the Senate's doing it well. You need fair competition. I am all about that, and I think a lot of people are. So I think this needs to be readdressed. So if you're in that, if you have a girl that plays sports, especially if you have a transgender student, this is something that I think you should probably put on your radar and be aware of. I don't think that the House got it right. Hopefully they uh, can correct it. Uh, before uh, transgender athletes are impacted and affected. So that is what I got on my mind today. Coming up here in just a couple of minutes, Netflix. They're going to help you get to sleep after years of keeping you up. (laughs) (laughs) What? (laughs) And maybe you need this today. How is the best way to actually wake up in the morning feeling great? It's a very simple, easy thing you can do when I tell you about it next. More KVJ Show right now on 97.9 WRMF. You've spent years losing sleep because of Netflix. Now Netflix wants to help you get sleep. They've teamed up with the meditation app Headspace for a new show called Headspace Guide to Sleep that is going to be premiering in two weeks. And I used to use that Headspace when I tried the meditation a couple of years ago, and I got to the point where you had to start paying, and I was like, okay. Your free trial is up, sir. Right. So I did not pay for it. But now you already pay for Netflix, so it's going to be free on Netflix? I bet you it's not free. I bet it's a side thing. I don't know that it is because right now there's already a Headspace show that is on there, a guide to meditation that uh, they have. And this is now going to be Headspace Guide to Sleep, which seems like they're going to be taking it in a different direction. So this technically would be the second show, at least that I'm aware of, that Netflix has done with this Headspace. There is some really great free stuff on YouTube for people who need that kind of that noise in the background. They have stuff where it sounds like an air condition comes on. They've got the ocean. They've got thunder. Yeah. They have all kind of fun stuff. It's Headspace for a head case. It really yeah, it is, is for people who want to block out the voices in their head. <laughs> yeah, I can't hear you over the demons. <laughs> You're right. It does help block them out. Yeah, so it'll be there. So just uh, do a quick search on that Headspace. You'll get a couple things. One, if you want to learn a little bit more about meditation, they've got the show for that, and then the Guide to Sleep is coming up here in just about 14 days. There's this one channel on YouTube. You put the TV on, you get set up in bed, and it's you, and they have you floating in space with this real peaceful, galactic kind of go to bed type music and you are floating through space you're on the space bed on a ship and it really does kind of calm you down huh yeah. okay yeah they got some good stuff on there <laughs> uh, Virginia's looking at me I now. hate space so I wouldn't do it but. they have other ones you could you can uh you could um actually there's one where you could uh Sit on the Titanic and it crashes as you're going to sleep. Well, that sounds awful. It's kind of it's kind of awesome, actually. <laughs> sounds like that's the horrific. Introduction to a nightmare. What else? They're gonna have one where I get chased and stabbed. It shows in real time what it was like for the Titanic to sink, and it shows how it breaks. But the way they do it, it looks so peaceful at nighttime when you're going to bed. 
Hmm. Uh, okay. I have a hard time believing that. <laughs> if you talk to people that were on the Titanic when it crashed, I have a feeling they'd probably tell you anything but peaceful. It was the opposite of I'll, peaceful. I'll send you a link. It's 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 pretty cool. Hmm. Huh. So we're telling you how to go to sleep with Netflix. How do you wake up in the best way? They say that if you want to wake up more alert and less groggy, wake up to a song you like. That is their strategy. And I was actually reading that this morning as a song came on that I liked. I'm like, you're right, it works. Huh. If you throw that, you got a little song in the background, you wake up, maybe there's bacon, some smells to help you wake oh up a gosh. little bit. Oh my gosh. If there was somebody downstairs cooking bacon, I'd be up quick. With yeah. your favorite song playing? Yeah, the bacon part's a lot more complex. <laughs> You got to get a guy in your house. He's got to yeah. have a key. Yeah. You got to trust that he won't murder you. Yeah. There's a part on the office where he makes his own bacon in the morning, but he lives alone, so he has it set up. So he walks onto his grill and cooks his foot because he lives by himself. <laughs> but the smell of bacon. Oh, okay. Yeah, so just uh, crank it up. The one thing they do say is the song should be upbeat. They found that uh, sad, slow, depressing music is not going to wake you up, make you more alert and less groggy, but just put on a song you like that is upbeat, and bam, it'll okay. get you going. That's what they say. So, I don't know. We'll see. Well, with uh, Netflix, I'll let you know that they have come out, according to Morgan Stanley, as the most widely used streaming service in America. What else do you think is on the list behind Netflix? In fact, they are not only the most widely used, but people will agree and buy a lot that they have the best original programming. Oh. So who's second in your own mind? The KVJ Show on 97.9 WRMS. Somebody actually said that they do have a bacon alarm clock that starts cooking bacon by your bed for you. Boom, look at that. Wow. So wait, do you have to leave bacon raw on it all night? That's the only downfall <laughs> I see to it, but apparently that's what it does. Huh. So it would slowly start gently warming up and cooking bacon right next to your head. That's what <laughs> happens in Steve Carell's character in The Office. And then you put the alarm clock too close to your face and the grease splatters right on it. Oh my gosh, my girlfriend, she burned her boobs so bad yeah. cooking bacon naked. Yeah. I Cook, I burn. I burn a lot of uh, parts of my body cooking naked. Bacon will yourself. spit at you from across the yeah. room. You got to be careful yeah. with that untrustworthy bacon. When yeah. I cook, it spits back at me. Yeah, and you're gonna put that as an alarm clock next to your bed. <laughs> some people like to live dangerously. Okay. Uh, some people like a grease burn on their eyeball. It's great. Hey, it'll wake you up, right? Is bacon the best thing to wake up to? A, a good waffle or a pancake would be nice. Oh yeah, the smells of uh, amazing food in the kitchen. Oh, I got these chicken sauce. Sausages with apple in them. Oh, they're so good for Ooh. breakfast. I don't want to wake up with that, though. Mm. They're always throwing some weird kind of fancy thing. It's not fancy. I don't know. It, it's, it's off. Yeah, <laughs> it's off. <laughs> Chicken and apple. <laughs> According to Morgan Stanley, the average U.S. household now pays for two and a half streaming video services. That's where we are. So we cut the cord. We were so proud of ourselves, and now we're just uh, putting all the money now into streaming services. Who's the dummy here? Yeah, I think we, well, I still have DirecTV because of the NFL package, Yeah, and all we have is Netflix. Do you still have that wrestling channel? No, I think Panda got rid of it. I think they got, I think they don't have it like they used to either. Oh, they did something okay. with it, because I've been trying to get it. It was only like 10 bucks a month, Yeah, but I don't think he watched it enough to justify it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were doing, my son had it for a while. They were doing reality shows and all that kind of stuff with wrestlers. That's what I love. They had some yeah. really goofball <laughs> programming going on there. That I, I Wrestling is goofball. But even deeper than the regular wrestling. They, they did one show as two wrestlers on a road trip. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're talking about. It was so dumb. I love it. <laughs> so if you're looking for the best in streaming and you want to try to keep that two and a half to three services, what do you go with? Netflix, far and away, the investments that they have made into programming is paid off. Off because they are by far the most widely used streaming service. 58% of people say who do streaming use and have Netflix. Wow. 
Forty-five percent for Amazon Prime. It's number two. Forty-five percent have Amazon Prime. I'm yeah. there quite a bit. I'm, 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 I was I'm, I was really surprised by that number. I'm milling around, and I started. What's on it? I started milling around because that's where Coming to America was at, and Coming uh, to America got me there, and I yeah. started looking at other stuff. Yeah, uh, the Amazon Prime. Yeah, it was uh, a couple shows had uh, dragged me over to it. Uh, the one was. Uh, I'm drawing a blank. Never mind. But um, it was. Uh, I'll come back to it because I can't think of what it is. Getting old, man. <laughs> Peacock. No, that's a streaming a service. I'm talking about it. <laughs> I'm trying to help. I'm not- You're not helping. <laughs> Wow. The man's over here trying to think of a show well, went, yeah. on Amazon Prime, and you just named another network. Hulu. <laughs> and how are you helping? Disney Plus. How are you helping by critiquing me for two years? You're not helping me. Wow. wow. I'm, at least I'm not derailing Kevin. Poor thing, trying to think. Hey, He's I'm old. I'm trying to think. He's yelling other streaming services at me. <laughs> N- N- Narcos. <laughs> <laughs> at least now you named a show. <laughs> So you are warming up a little bit. On a bit. competing network, though. So is he helping? No, he's not helping at all. <laughs> not helping at all. But it's better than the first recommendation he had. Your pizza hat's on too tight. Yeah, I think it is. Good <laughs> heavens. Wow. Uh, yeah, so you got Amazon Prime at number two for not only most used, but also they say best original programming as well. Disney Plus falls in line at number three. Oh, yeah, we have that, but we don't pay for it. We use Jason's password. It okay. all evens out because I'm not paying for my HBO. I'm using my handyman's HBO. Okay. It all evens out. Thirty one percent are using the Disney Plus. Then you got HBO Max at twenty percent, and then the Peacock is up to thirteen percent for most widely used. Now, if you're talking about the best original programming, it kind of falls similarly in line with the top three: Netflix. 39% best original Amazon Prime than Disney Plus. And then you've got Hulu at number four with 7% and HBO Max with six. But far and away, you're just seeing that, you know, Netflix, they say 39% has the best original programming, Amazon Prime at 12. So Netflix is in a big lead. So I if think, you had to have one, Netflix seems to be the way to go. I think who's got the best original programming, I think it's HBO, in my opinion. Uh, they, they they can't really miss the series, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Amazon Prime, a couple things to go with. I think the 000 is uh, one that I'd watch that is really good. I would check that out. And mine, the Jack Ryan, that's what it is. The Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan is one that I saw on there. They've got uh, Goliath, which I think was a pretty decent show as well. So that's some of the ones that are there. So if you're looking for the best streaming services, those are the top three that most people have and like the best. Do you need more KVJ Show? Find everything KVJ at kvjshow.com. Celebrities having a birthday today. Got a shout out for Seth Rogen. I'm sure he's uh, very excited that uh, coming up on Tuesday, it's 420. So he's got a big, big Oh, that's uh, right, 420. Yeah. He just got called out on social media for having some kind of toxic uh, environment for one of his movies. He was a director from. Someone called him out. Oh, he's getting canceled oh. for his birthday? He's getting canceled. That's They're a terrible <laughs> present. They're Happy trying. birthday, you're finished. They're trying. I saw it in a couple uh, yeah. places. I, but this story hasn't blown up too much. Okay. And Chris Stapleton is 43 today. He is a musical artist that if you don't know, you need to know. He's technically in the country genre, but he doesn't necessarily fit in the country genre. I don't know if you can really put him into a box. It's kind of a... I don't know. It's just good music. It's, um, you know, got kind of a southern rock kind of thing to you it. You ain't so. putting me in no box. Yeah, he's uh, you. He's actually one of his songs is on a car, a truck commercial. Oh. He does a song too with Justin Timberlake called I think Say Something. Yeah, he did. He's uh, done. Uh, he's one of those artists that has mad respect from everybody. Yeah, he does. Other artists are like this guy's really solid. Rolling Stones would always put him in a you know a top twenty of he's in bad, a list badasses of country people who aren't country. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Chris Stapleton's his name. If you want to check him out, a couple of great songs out there from him. Also. Also, we got a couple birthday shout outs. Isabella Davis having a birthday from dad, mom, big brothers Jonathan and Maxwell, big sisters Claudia and Maria, and grandma Mary and Rosalinda. Also, we got a shout out to Espen 
best son and brother ever have a very happy 15th birthday from mommy and sister ev happy birthday yeah doing that kind of got the photo a little bit uh, cut off there but there's a little bit of uh espen always see him out there and a fun fact for him uh, Adam Sandler had uh, run into him and heard the name and then used the name Espen in one of his movies. So Adorable. That came from that Espen right there. ESPN is how it is. Spelled. So pronounced Espen. Cool little fun fact. Thank you for the birthdays. You can always send them to us. Mail at kvjshow.com. M-A-I-L at kvjshow.com. A couple of uh, comments we'd have from our streaming discussion. Somebody said the reason so many people have Amazon Prime is because you subscribe to that uh, get free one or two day shipping if you order a lot from Amazon and then the streaming comes with it. They are right. I didn't even know I had the streaming service. I'm like, oh, I can buy movies. This is great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, it happens. You I, you can accidentally sign up for Amazon Prime too. I did that. And then yeah. it's $12.99 a month. It is? Yeah. I've been priming it up. For a while, twelve well, month for a month. I just looked at the credit card statement and I was like, "Wait a minute, what?" I didn't even mean to sign up for that. I think it's worth I, it though. Fat fingers over here. I, I've been paying for it since January and didn't even know. I think it's worth it. I think it comes with. I've never watched it. I don't get Amazon stuff delivered to my house. But Amazon Prime, I think for for someone who does order a lot of stuff, I think there's a lot of deals. There's a lot of. Uh, it's, it's something that if you use, it's worth it. And I don't use it. Then it's not worth it. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, the one thing I would say is that people did vote them as second best for content on top of it. So I guess when people find it and they look into it and they're like, oh, that Jack Ryan show's good. The zero, 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 that's good. And of course, uh, like you'd said, Jaybird, they did the new coming to America. That uh, was, or was that HBO Max that did that? I am wrong a lot. I don't even know. <laughs> Maybe it was, I think it was Amazon, actually, that did that. It's also, uh, somebody want to let uh, Vicious V know that there's a new season of Queen of the South on DirecTV. I'm already watching it. It's on the USA Network. And okay. we are, I think, three episodes in now. Okay. And it's good. And I like it. I know people are pumped, and my wife included. There is a new season of Handmaid's Tale. Is that the name of the show that everybody loves? Yeah, that creepy show. Yeah, I, I know what it's about. I'm like, oh, I'm not going to watch that. I, I can't with that. It, yeah. It's a little heavy for me. In three seconds, can you tell me what it's about? Sexual perversion with young women, and they wear weird Pass red three. cloaks. Wow, all right. That's kind of awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bird's in. Well, the way Virginia described it sounds kind of fun. I think the broads are like taking advantage of. Uh, we didn't say that lead with that. Yeah, it's like yeah, weird. It's disturbing. It's disturbing. Well, yeah. okay, you lead with it's disturbing. Well, perversion. You got excited. Well, it's per- yeah, he did. It's <laughs> He's in on perversion. It's <laughs> perversion always. It's a- not good perversion. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think it's like twisted. Now I get it. I don't okay. want to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> don't email me that I'm a creepo. Mm. Email Kevin. <laughs> And uh, the way we watch TV is changing, too. 90% of people now say they use their phone or tablet while they're watching TV. Wow. Because they, a lot of times, have a discussion going on as people are watching it. That's why Netflix was talking about uh, now going back to, at least with the reality shows, releasing one at a time. Because they've realized and looked at stats like this, the communal effect of people watching a show together in real time and then having the whole week to talk about that episode before they give you another one. So, yeah. So that's uh, some of the stuff that they're looking at. KBJ Nation, you know we love you. Will you give us a little love back? A like, a comment, a share, even a review would help so much. Thanks. KBJ Draft, we are going to be doing the hottest men on the planet here today for our draft. What we got to do is we're going to be picking out a playing card, picking out the order of the draft, and then you get to ultimately pick three dudes for your team. And then we'll have people vote on who picked out the best team. And then tomorrow at this time, we'll announce who the winner is. So you get to vote all day long. Is the ob- objective of this, is it carnal feelings or what is this? Is <laughs> Only it, for you. Is it just they are attractive? Is it uh, sexual? Like How do you cat. define hottest, Virginia? I mean, it's all of that. It's 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 yeah. the it's the genesic one. It's the whole it's just, Yeah, it's yeah. something makes you just go, wow, that that dude's got it. Just see what the criteria is. I got a four diamonds. What you got, Virginia? I got a two. Oh dang! I got Jaybird's card. I got a six of a clubs. Was that club space? Okay. <laughs> okay. What do you got, Denny's? I got a five. 
Dang, okay. we all got low cards Jeez, today. What about uh, suits in there? Oh, you got an ace. Dang, suits goes first. Are we doing dead celebrities too, or are we keeping them alive? I think that's a criteria we should set. Uh, I don't know. Are you okay with doing dead, I guess, right? I guess. But then would you do dead at their peak? Dead at their peak. And then alive currently? And it makes no sense. That's why. That's I, true. It's ridiculous. Yeah, dead's out. All right. That's why I ask. Take this seriously. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Bye, <laughs> President Lincoln. <laughs> Hottest men alive. All right, all right. Okay, so I think our draft order is going to go Suits, Jaybird, Denny's, myself, and then Virginia. Okay, here we go. So Suits is running KVJ TV, so he's in the side studio on the phone. What you got for your first overall pick in the KVJ draft for the hottest men on the planet here, Suits? I am going to go with David Beckham. Oh, David Beckham. Remember, pick. you can't use no hands in soccer suits. <laughs> Yes, you can. What does that mean? Uh, soccer people got it. <laughs> oh, they did. Okay. That's good. Jay Bird, you got the second pick. What you going with? If you smell what The Rock is cooking. Go with The Rock. Yes. Rock bottom me. Okay. All right. We got uh, two guys with South Florida ties off the board. Denny's, you got next pick. Hottest man on the planet. Who you going for? I was going to go with uh, everybody loves him, Keanu Reeves. Uh huh. It's like your body double. Yes. I'm going to put Denny's on the list too, but didn't think we could do local. Mm. <laughs> okay, with my overall first pick, I am going to go with Bradley Cooper. Oh, you're a Cooper Trooper. Yeah. Okay. I'll go with Bradley Cooper. He likes that that Cooper Pooper. <laughs> oh, yeah. Does you he? know it. <laughs> Virginia, you got the next two picks in the KBJ draft. All right. I am going to take Brad Pitt. Okay. And then I'm going to take... Uh, it's between two. George Clooney. You old? I know. Okay. <laughs> Clearly, you like Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. Her list kicked ass back in '95. <laughs> Nobody asked you. You tried to pick Abraham Lincoln. Oh, okay. my bad. Yeah, he didn't do anything great. <laughs> he said be zombie. Okay, next pick in the draft for me. I am going to go with Lenny Kravitz. Oh, oh that's a good that's one. That's a good one. Okay, Denny's. You got next pick. I think I'm going to go with. Uh, I'm going to go with Hugh Jackman. I think that guy's a good-looking dude. Wolverine. Wolverine. Okay. All right. Yeah, he's and he's multi-talented. Yeah, Very nice. He's a man of the stage. Okay, Bird, who are you going to pick for the hottest man on the planet to go with The Rock? Team Bird goes with Jason Momoa Aquaman. I might have just won the tournament. Oh, you think so? Just took okay. a pick. Yep, suits. Okay. Suck it, suits. Jay Bird's got a lot of studs in there, doesn't he? I do. He likes tough, muscular men. He likes a man to just yeah, work does. him over. Yeah. Clearly, we know he's a bottom. Clearly. Yeah. The rock bottom. You're a sub. <laughs> okay, suits. You got the next two picks. KBJ Draft for the hottest man on the planet. I will take Ryan Reynolds. Oh. Okay, and solid. Chris Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth. Okay. Very nice. Okay, Bird, your final pick for your team for the hottest men on the planet. Team Bird goes with uh, Channing Tatum. What? (laughs) You have to be able to say it. Who are you going with? Channing Tatum. Channing Tatum? All right, we'll write down Channing Tatum. Tatum Channing. Channing Tatum. Uh, Magic Mike. (laughs) We can't take care of Channing Tatum. Channing Tatum. Chain? Okay. Yeah, chain and t- yep. Okay. Boom. Got it? <laughs> Rounded up the big three. Feeling good about it? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, Denny's, who are you going with? I was going to do Kevin Ralston for my final oh, pick. Oh, man. That's yeah. Oh. I, think that, I honestly think that wins the I tournament. I think that still yeah. works, right? Yeah. I think it wins the I'm tournament. Like, uh, Kevin Ralston in Oh, there. come on. That's, <laughs> that feels like that's. I was it should my, be foul. It's an interesting play. I was going to throw my it dad is an in interesting there. play. How, yeah. Yeah, how, how, will it, how will it work? Yeah, if, if, we, if we can't, I have another choice. But you okay. know. Let, I say let them play. It's an interesting experiment. Okay, my final pick. I am going to go with Cristiano Ronaldo. Oh, he's good too. Okay. All right. Does he have good hair? He sounds like he's got he great hair. He's got hair. that polo Great hair. Bodies. Uh, yeah. yeah, he's 
He's everything he's a you're stud. not. You're he's everything. a stud. All right, pipe down. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting heckled by the old woman over here, Kevin. Yeah, Virginia, who are you going to add to your over 50 team? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Grandma, what do you got? When Grandma likes to fantasize, <laughs> what? I'm taking Shamar Moore. He was on Young and the yeah. Restless, and he has been delicious for many years. Good looking dude. Shamar Moore. Okay, here we go. This is a recap of who we have. Hottest men on the planet. Virginia's hot stud team is Shamar Moore, George Clooney, and Brad Pitt. I have got Bradley Cooper, Lenny Kravitz, and Cristiano Ronaldo. Denny's has got Keanu Reeves, Hugh Jackman, and me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm voting for Denny's. Yes. <laughs> he might win it. Oh, jeez. Uh, Jaybird's got The Rock, Jason Momoa, and Channing Tatum. And then Suits has got David Beckham, Ryan Reynolds, and Chris Hemsworth. Yeah, Suits lost. I think Virginia lost. Whatever. I think Virginia. Or I think Denny's won. All the old biddies are going to vote on my list. Denny's has the sex factor. <laughs> okay. Kevin Ralston. <laughs> More KVJ show right now on 97.9 WRMF. All right. Hopefully you guys are ready to laugh. Time for another round of producer Denny's joke jury. It's yeah. my favorite. Yeah. Denny's want to laugh. Yeah. He <laughs> writes up the comedy. We judge it. You brought those rotten tomatoes this week, right? Just oh. in case we don't chuckle. You know it. Uh, mm-hmm. I, we could never throw tomatoes at Denny's. That's sweet Denny's. All I brought was fish guts. Will that work? Oh, I prefer tomatoes. <laughs> 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 All right, let's uh, see what we got here. Denny's, take it away. Uh, joke one, what's the worst part about running into Stuart Little at a party? I don't know. What is the worst part about running into Stuart Little at a party? The small talk. Oh, oh yeah. right. Mouse. Okay. We're small. <laughs> <laughs> Second joke. Uh, what game do plumbers play at the casino? I don't know what game do plumbers play at the casino. Craps. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yep. Moving on. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get myself warmed up. Oh, yep. Oh, yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's Kevin laughing. In it. Yep. All right. <laughs> uh, third joke. Uh, why do paranormal teams go to Panama for spring break? I don't know. Why do they go to Panama for spring break? Because ghouls gone wild. <laughs> <laughs> ghouls gone wild. Okay. I'm, I love ghouls. Try to get flashed by getting there. <laughs> getting there. Warming up. Yeah. Uh, fourth joke. What happened to the trash talking snail? I don't know. What, what did happen? Got slugged. Oh, oh. bam. <laughs> Take that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, finish it up strong, Denny's. Final joke for you guys. Uh, what do cartographers do when they're horny? <laughs> What's a cartographer? Uh, they make, like, you know, they, they paint the geographic formations yeah. of you gotta land. Love doing the, maps. You got to love when the <laughs> audience maps. asks questions <laughs> for the joke. <laughs> I know cartographers are stressed. I like they love it because it's so random <laughs> yeah. and rare. Comedian, it was can a you great explain setup, your yeah. joke? Yeah. Cartographer humor. <laughs> I don't know, Denny's, what is it? What do they do? Well, yeah. they, they map that ass. <laughs> <laughs> they map that ass? I don't know ass? if I get it. Like, what is that? They map that ass? I love Virginia's confusion <laughs> in her head. It's like, I still don't get it. They map that ass? What, they, what do they do? <laughs> they, they map that <laughs> ass. <laughs> you didn't know what a cartographer it was either. I don't get the punchline either. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what? We're all lost. Oh, there you go. Your decision-making skills are on point. You're listening to the KVJ Show on 97.9 WRMF. Okay, do you want to be the cool mom? I know some moms care about that. There are two elements, they say, that will make you the cool mom, according to a new survey. One, mom will talk openly with her kids about anything and everything. Anything? Anything. 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 And two, to be the cool mom, she will let her kids get away with some things that a, quote, normal mom wouldn't when they're growing up. Cocaine parties. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, I'm cool. Look at me. Come on, kids. Do a rail. I draw the line at, uh, oh, blow. I draw the line at blow. (laughs) You do. Okay. (laughs) 
<laughs> so there you go. That's apparently what it takes if you care to be the cool mom. Some moms just like, I don't care to be cool. Yeah, it's not that important to me. I'd rather be the mom that keeps her kids safe. Yeah. How about raising a decent human? Let's, yeah. let's, yeah. let's concentrate on that part. Let's yeah. focus on the important things, like mm. uh, training them to be kind to people. Being hashtag be cool. Contribute to society. Work hard. Care. A great influencer. <laughs> So what was your day of mothering like yesterday, Virginia? As you talked about Rocco here, after the parent-teacher conference, they had talked about him kind of staring up at the sky, not really getting plugged into his work. You are having struggles at home, get him to do it, and he also wasn't really socializing with kids his age. Yeah, it was very upsetting to hear just how unplugged Rocco was at kindergarten Mm -hmm. and how he's just kind of like, whatever, I don't want to do it, I'm not going to do it. So yesterday I was dreading him coming home from school it, so much that it gave me like a headache and I was all like nervous about it. A little anxiety? Yeah. My eye was twitching. It was weird. I was just mm-hmm. like, ah. Maybe you got some of that pink, pink oh. eye again. <laughs> and then I got a message from his teacher and she wanted to give me a full report on how he did on the first day back after his bad report. Okay. And she said he was engaged. She said he was into it. What? He was such a part of the class and really seemed to care. She said today was amazing. He was even trying to help out his friends. He was on task. He was focused. He earned little prizes for doing good. I mean, to me, that sounds like a celebration, a win. We've got some whiskey. Let's I got celebrate. The, I got the kid pizza last night. I was so happy. Wow. I took him to his favorite store, Rocky's Ace Hardware in Tequesta. Okay. And I bought him a key fob, which he wanted. Oh, I get it. And uh, got him pizza. A key fob. <laughs> he wanted a key fob. I don't know. Boys will be boys. <laughs> well, what do you think changed then? I think... We just impressed upon him how important it was. I don't know if it was me screaming or his dad speaking peacefully to him. He listened to yesterday's show. (laughs) Yeah, I'm just wondering. So, I mean, when you and Panda talk, who can claim a victory here with their parenting style? I think Panda. Because Panda drops him off at school. Uh So Panda gets the last moments with him, the last chance in his ear And Panda was all about the positive reinforcement, which I said I'd be happy to do if we had something positive to celebrate. Okay. And we did yesterday, so we did celebrate it. Wouldn't that be cool if every time I behaved in a meeting, I got pizza? (laughs) That would be the definition of living, baby. You're grown up. You can. I hear you. It's a cool reward. Imagine, though. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very interesting stuff. I know. So we'll see if he can keep it up. Okay. Or if it was a one-day thing, I just, I pray he can keep it up. When's his birthday? July. All right. He's going to be what, nine? Six. Six. Okay, six. What would you say? He's not going to be sex. <laughs> He's going to be six. I almost said seven. Six and seven, if you put it together, it comes out as sex. <laughs> <laughs> Which is weird. It is. <laughs> Well, apparently there is a new term that uh, we need to get rid of in our society as well, the Associated Press style book. I guess they put together words, how we use it. They teach people how to write for publications today. And they are arguing that the term mistress is no longer appropriate for a woman who is in a long-term sexual relationship with and is financially supported by a man who is married to someone else. (laughs) Why? Are mistresses getting their feelings hurt? (laughs) They say instead you should be using an alternative like companion, friend, or lover. (laughs) Hooker, homewrecker. On first reference and provide additional details later. Did they have tramp in there? (laughs) About to get her ass kicked? Yeah, we're not we're not gonna we're not gonna lighten up on how we feel when someone wrecks a marriage. Yeah. Sorry. If you're sleeping with married dudes, you deserve all the bad things we say. I'm not going to clean it up. The Fire me. thought <laughs> of using mistress is because 
there is thought that it is unfair that there doesn't seem to be a male equivalent to the term mistress oh. painting shade only on women who knowingly have a sexual relationship with someone who is married. That's a bunch no. of horse crap. It's He's not a pig. True. He's a pig. He's disgusting. Mm. We hate him. He's terrible. He's gross. He's a pervert. They always act like there's not these terms for these piggy men, and there are. Everyone knows a guy that cheats on his wife is a pig. And so that's that would be the official term. If you had to say, what do we call the guy equivalent? It's pig. A cheating pig. Yeah, a cheating pig, a disgusting human. We're not defending cheaters here. No. We're not going to the yeah. point where I have to be politically correct because yeah. someone's sleeping with a husband who might hurt their feelings. Right. It's not going to happen. I already got crap for calling a dancer, a stripper, a bird, get out of the, the 20, 20th century. How dare you? <laughs> I don't know what people want. <laughs> so they're a dancer. You don't use stripper. Oh, someone sent me a long email. I, I said we were, we were talking about dancers and I called the person a not, stripper. Do they not take their clothes off? Dog, I didn't even respond back. I read it. I drank after. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it was basically saying I was such a bad person for yeah. calling dancers strippers. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. They're always changing the terms on they us. Are. Now they're changing this one. And we're old. <laughs> yeah, you think I really meant harm by calling someone a stripper? No. no. Yeah. Of course not. I don't think you should treat anybody bad because they're a stripper. Anybody who brings their boobies out for joy should be celebrated. If I took off my clothes for money and I was stripping off my clothes, I'd be okay with you calling well, me a stripper. I, I think with a lot of these terms, they feel like the term brings a lot of bad connotations and associations. So they want a new term that freshens it up. But my question is, is then just over time, does that new term just not take on the same stank that the last term had? Of course it does. And then in 40 years, you're going to have to come up with a new word. You can't right. say dancer anymore. It's, because it, they also don't It's dirty dance. and moldy. Yeah, and, exactly. But the whole concept hasn't changed in what you do. Dog, I say it every week. I'm aging out of earth. Yes. <laughs> KBJ not only does a radio show, but also does an after the show podcast. Watch or listen on kbjshow.com. Debate about the term mistress for a woman who is in a long-term sexual relationship with and is financially supported by a man who is married to someone else. The Associated Press style book is recommending to get away from the term and they provided other alternatives like a companion, friend, or lover to go with instead. And I think that uh, some people bringing up the point that it uh, is sexist, and somebody did text in and said, yeah, there's no standard male equivalent to mistress. Mistress is sexist, and uh, that's where we're missing the mark. So the question is, is to me, what would be an agreed-upon term? Some people are saying maybe man whore, but does that have the same type of feel as mistress? I don't see how this is sexist in the least bit. This is where I think people have too much time on their hands and they want to get offended about something. It, okay, you know what? Let's not call them mistress. Let's call them home records. I think home records sounds worse. Mistress kind of sounds classy to me. Mm -hmm. They can both be a home wrecker. He can also be a D head. He can be a dirty scoundrel. He can be a filthy bastard. Like, we're, there's we're, plenty of names for him, too. We're basically arguing that there's not a exact equivalent term mm. for it, but she just listed off so many things you would call somebody who does that as a man. Yeah, and I think that's just what it is, is they want, okay, guys should be held accountable and is shamed by a term that sticks to them and it should be looked on in our society as just as bad when a guy goes in for a married woman and does the exact same thing. We have a mistress. What is that guy? We got to make sure that dudes don't get it easier than women when they do the exact same thing. Who are these people who think men don't get called terrible names when they are out cheating and sleeping with a bunch of women? They absolutely get called terrible names when they do that. So to act like men are getting a free pass on this is just not accurate. Now, whoever does this to an innocent spouse, whether it's a man or a woman, it, when you're hurting an innocent spouse that gets blindsided by this, whether you're the one who's in the marriage or the one who's not in the marriage, you're a dirt bag. This is the kind of stuff in the media that people get annoyed with because they're they're writing something that's appearing as a news or an opinion article behind some kind of publication, but it's not accurate. Don't let them get us all upset and turn the sexes against each that's other. That's what they're doing again. That, that's, that's not fair because both sexes are disgusting and 
and gross for what they've done. Yes. And we call them both out. Yeah. We like, use different words, but we call them both out. When you got the man hater Virginia agreeing with me, you know that that article's bogus. Can mm. I get an amen? He's right. I mean, yeah. most men, I do hate them. And I think all they're trying to say is that just we have a standard term for the women. <laughs> Let's adopt one for the guys and make no, sure that it's not? treated equally. Well, there's, not? there's not one, but I don't think it was done on purpose to be mean to women. Mm-hmm. This is exactly what they do. See how we're getting all like, bitchy and ah, oh, what, what? Don't you guys let are them. Very fired up. Well, this, this is, is what not they a, do, though. This is not a sex thing. They, this is not a women versus men thing. This mm-hmm. is all of us against cheaters. Yeah. This is all of us against people that break up happy homes. I would say go get a hobby too. Somebody said in Spanish, they are referred to as amante. It's for male and female. So it has the same connotation for either gender so that uh, one is not held more responsible than the other. They're treated equally, which well, they should fair. be. Yes. To me, being called a mistress or a cheating pig, I think cheating pig sounds way worse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, in Mexico, they call that uh, person a married uh, guy who's with a married woman, a Sancho. 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 Mm-hmm. Mm. There you go. I think well, I think what we've kind of all agree with with this whole conversation is men are pigs. <laughs> there are plenty of times to be mad at men. And yeah, trust me, exactly. I'll be the first in line. <laughs> and, but just and, because they don't have a name that is the equivalent of mistress is not a reason to be mad at them. And the reason why they do this is because they know people are going to get all fired up because you're now d- defending the mistress, the one that's wrecking the home. They're they're defending it and mm. making it that they're not that bad of a... We need to be nicer to the mistress, which is going to get people going, what? Mm. I got to get online. I got to fight. Share this. Can you believe this? Mistress, men, women. Why? We hate each other. Yeah, and I don't, it's true. I don't like the Associated Press's play because they are trying to sugarcoat, in a sense, what it is, where they're saying, oh, I'll call him a companion, a friend, or a lover. And, and, the and that's out that's out that's, out here. that's why I don't like where they're going with it. But the one point made is, you know, we do in English need to have a male equivalent to mistress. Make sure that we don't let uh, dudes off the hook. We're not, though. Who's letting these guys off the hook? (laughs) Nobody is. You call out piggy people. Coming up here in a couple minutes, do you have something that you need to confess today? Man, we had a run of them last week. We had so many great confessions come in. I've got those I'll kick off with next, the ones that we didn't get to last week. So if you got one, get it in fast. It's anonymous. You just text it to us, 877-979-WRMF. I think people are finding out just how cleansing it is on their soul just to... Let us know what is going on in their lives. What do you have to confess? And it doesn't have to be anything recent either. You can let us know. The KBJ Confessional is open next. More KBJ Show right now on 97.9 WRMF. A ton of great uh, confessions came in tail end last week. I will uh, start those off here today. Look, nobody's perfect. Sometimes the first step is just kind of admitting that, okay, I did something we all have. We've all done terrible things in our life. We're all thinking about doing terrible things later today. Yeah. It'd be cool if we had some mistresses come in, call in with their... <laughs> with their. We do have some of that. Yeah, mistresses are uh, Some mistresses that want to whoop up on us. Yeah, I like yeah. all of their confessions. <laughs> yeah. Uh, of course, we can all do a little bit better, but I uh, just feel a little bit more human here. We're... Letting people text in their confessions, 877-979-WRMF, 877-979-9763. One text said, my ex-boyfriend bought a car for me to drive. Relax, it was a Hyundai, not a Porsche. And when he broke up with me, I stopped making payments and let it get repossessed. Okay. Dang, I mean, I need more details to see who really is the jerk in that situation. Okay. Somebody else said, I had sex with a guy, the condom broke, and I hoped I was pregnant, so the guy had to stay with me. Oh. Well, if you didn't break it on purpose and you're only yeah. hoping. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think uh, victimless crime at this point. You didn't do anything on purpose. Now, if you broke it on purpose and you're still hoping, now that we have a problem. I stuck 14 needle holes in it. Is that on purpose? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Somebody said, back in 2013, working at Toys R Us, my coworkers and I, two guys and three girls, got a hotel room and had an impromptu orgy. It was great. A Toys R Us orgy? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I don't want to grow up. I'm a Toys R Us kid. Dang. (laughs) 
Okay, didn't know they were so... They worked in the giraffe. I wonder how many times that happens in a uh, work situation where the entire shift has an orgy. <laughs> Dang. It sounds like it's definitely the setting of some porn movie. I mean, Toys R Us, it's such a so pure, so innocent. I know, and then you go to a hotel for an orgy afterwards? Who would have thought? How did that get started? I have so many more details. Can they call in? I, I don't know. Maybe they could. They've got a text number on that one. Please. Call them up. Another text said, I've been giving oral favors to my new coworker every week in the bathroom at work, mail on mail. All right. Whoa. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I, mm-hmm. Never mind. I can't tell that story. <laughs> you did it too? No, no, no. But we walked in on something. I, we don't want to. We don't want to. Never mind. I can't. There's too many people. You walked in on mail on mail mm-hmm. action in the men's restroom? Not at this station. Oh. <gasps> So you did. But we'll just leave it at that. Was it in Miami? We'll leave it at that. Mm. I shouldn't have said anything. Did I forget? You you told me this and I forgot the story? I think so. <gasps> Juicy. Oh, wow. Maybe the after show podcast. It's it's too graphic. Well, you don't have to give names, but you need to give details. Kevin's going to well, have to dump me. We'll definitely have to get to it later. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, yeah, that might be something we need to hit up here soon. What you saw that you weren't supposed to see. Yes, definitely not supposed to see it. Scandal. Okay. All right, we'll uh, definitely get to that uh, here in just a bit. we got so many things to confess here today. <laughs> yeah, we do. Okay, other confessions that people have texted into us, 877-979-WRMF. Somebody here said, uh, my husband and I have an active sex life, but there are nights that I'm not feeling it. So I have an aromatherapy mist machine in my room that usually has a spa scent. But on those nights that I don't want any, I put on a lavender scent that knocks my husband out by the time I get out of the shower and he has no clue. (laughs) Sleepy time air mist. (laughs) Yeah, I I can't wait, honey. I'm going to take a shower and then we'll get at it right as soon as I get back. You're you're kind of aroma aroma drugging him. It's the tree hugging version of Xanax. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. You're kind of drugging him, but kind of not. It's a brilliant confession. <laughs> Very nice. Somebody said that uh, my confession is I made love with somebody I thought was very beautiful. And then two months later, I showed up to a family reunion to find her there. Turns out she's my first cousin. Oh, boy. And now it's an awkward situation. I don't know if I should tell my dad I made love to his brother's daughter. There's no bun in the oven, is there? And no, it happened right before the pandemic. So they're trying to figure <sighs> out, and they've uh, confessed this to their coworker who thinks that I should let the family know, but I don't want to mess anything up. What would KBJ say? I don't think you should let the family know, but you should definitely speak with her and make sure she agrees to keep this a secret from the adults. When I was 11, I had no idea what my cousin looked like, and then when I met her up in Pennsylvania, I didn't. I mean, I didn't. She didn't feel like my cousin. I kind of developed a crush on her. You like that body? I'm embarrassed to say I think I did. <laughs> yeah. But I didn't know. You know, after it was explained to me, you know, she's blood relative. But I, it was the first girl that really showed me attention, so I developed a crush on her. Aww. Yeah, but it's, am I sick? Is Kevin going to emails now? <laughs> <laughs> so you say don't say anything, Virginia, just... You I didn't would, know. You right? didn't know, yeah. and that's the thing. You didn't come into this with bad intentions to hurt her or the family. Yeah. But you may want to get her on the same page and make sure that she is okay with keeping it a secret too. Because if she tells everybody, then you're going to look like a bad guy. You got to see that coming. And I'm looking at this as a positive, half full kind of a thing. At least it wasn't your sister. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Let's look mm-hmm. at the positive. Yeah. Somebody texts in this confession said, I was supposed to get my COVID vaccine last night, but I went out drinking with a buddy instead. My wife woke up this morning to find me thrown up in the bathroom, and now she's told me she refuses to get her vaccine after seeing my reaction to it. She would be so pissed if I told her that I blew off my appointment to get hammered, so I'm staying quiet. Oh, no. You just did it all wrong, dude. You did oh, everything wrong. Man. You did it all wrong. Oh, she thinks you're throwing up because of the vaccine and you went out and got hammered instead? You got double eyes going right oh, there. Oh, man. Boy, that's a lot you got going on there, buddy. You need to immediately get the vaccine and 
just don't do anything stupid like that again. Jeez. And we do stupid things and we're telling you to stop doing it. Yeah. And you know what? When you have bad reactions to the vaccine that are anything worse than the norm, like sore arm, flu-like, like if you're ralphing and you're really, really sick, you're supposed to report that to your doctor and they're supposed to report it to the CDC so they can keep track of severe side effects. Yeah. yeah if you've got the EBBs. The eyeballs bleeding, you got a call. You do. Mm-hmm. The EBBs. Mm-hmm. Could you imagine if your eyeballs were bleeding? That'd be terrible. It'd be a tough symptom. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen to this. Somebody uh, texted this and said, when I was 10, I stuck a pin through a bar of soap and the tip broke off. <gasps> I panic, but then put the soap back on the dispenser, and then a week later, my dad starts screaming in the shower and comes out of the bathroom covered in blood. Oh, I can't hear it. What the hell? I felt terrible, but we did get a free year of soap. <laughs> did, did you ever say anything? No. That's why they're confessing it now all the way when they're 10. They did that. And Dad got so pissed, he got it for you or so. Oh, my gosh. Kids are so dumb. Oh, they, they do man. stuff like that. Oh, could you imagine, though, having a pin in your bar or so? Because, <laughs> oh, my gosh. It. Hopefully not. The- oh, man. <laughs> Kevin, that would be. Oh, that's terrible. A crushing blow oh, to the program. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, my gosh. Um. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody uh, said, uh, my confession, I was today's years old when I realized.